Welcome to uh, Flip AP Euro, the Age of Religious Wars. This is just the introduction video. Uh, today we are just looking at where, what started the Age of Religious Wars, really what ended the Reformation, and then where are we at the beginning of this time period. Um, and we'll break down each of those. And then from the subsequent videos of this series, we will look at each country in more detail and then wrap it up with the ending of the Age of Religious Wars with the hundred, the Thirty Years' War that really wasn't thirty years long. So before we can look at the beginning of the Age of Religious Wars, we need to look at the what caused the end of the Reformation. Um, the end of the Reformation is marked by the end of the Habsburg Violists War. Uh, this was a war. Uh, this is the board that my five-year-old made, so shout out to you, Caroline. Um, this one gives me more room to write. Uh, the end of this war, uh, well, during the war, we had two sides. You had the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, who was Catholic, versus the French, who is also Catholic, which is why this is not a religious war. You have Catholic versus Catholic here. The French were teaming up with the League of Protestant Nations within the Holy Roman Empire, within Germany, known as the... Let me make sure I spell this right. Somalic, Somaltic League. Yeah, that one, as we say in class. And, of course, we know that they are... Protestants. And this was really a war of politics for the idea that the Smaldics, not only were they wanting religious freedom within the Holy Roman Empire, they were just wanting political freedom as well. And so the Hat French, who were worried about being surrounded by Habsburgs, no map here, uh, joined forces with the Protestant princes of Germany to fight off the Germans. Um, a few things that this uh, this war did. Um, with the end of this war and the French eventually aiding the Smaldic League and then having to force a pre treaty with the Holy Roman Empire, what it ended up with was no hegemony, which is a big fancy SAT word for saying no political or cultural dominance for the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire wanted hegemony over its German provinces. Uh, that was a thing of Charles V. This war does not allow that. It is not possible, which is exactly why the French got involved. Again, marking it a political war, not a religious war. Um, some side effects of this. By the French aiding um, the German provinces, they did help the spread of Lutheran Lutheranism, which is a oops on their part since they are Catholic. Um, Francis I, the king of France, chooses politics, um, st stopping German unification over religious unification, um, having all of Europe under one Catholic banner of Christianity. Um, through this as well, Spain was uh, part of the Holy Roman Empire, or part of Charles V's Habsburg dynasty, so to say. Um, and they were fighting in Italy. Um, they do defeat Italy in northern or France in northern Italy, um, which led to Spain being set up to be the dominant power of this time period, which we'll get into more here. So why do we have this outbreak of religious warfare in Europe at this time? Well, each country has their own reason. Uh, in Spain, they saw themselves as the defenders of the Catholic faith, and so they reach all over Europe and want to knock out all of Protestantism throughout the whole country, or a continent. In France, the French Catholics want to destroy the movement of the Huguenots, because they too are Protestant, and France wants to keep itself purely Catholic. In the Holy Roman Empire, the start of the Protestant Reformation, um, and it has spread quite widely by this point in time, uh, the Holy Roman Emperor wants to return to the Catholic uh, traditions and in Protestantism there. So that leads to war in that region. 
And then in England, England having at once embraced, uh, embraced the Catholic faith, even though they called it the Church of England, it was still very Catholic light with divorce, uh, returns back to Catholicism, and then under Elizabeth, who we'll get into later, returns back to Protestantism, which leads to a civil war, and then there's religious warfare even within the Protestants in England as well. So, uh, lots of Christians killing Christians, following the message of Jesus real well. At the beginning of this time, from here on out, we're going to refer back to this slide quite a bit. Uh, so where are we when this all starts? Well, in Spain, we are being ruled by Philip II. Philip II is the son of Charles V. If you remember, Charles V was the grandson of Isabella and Ferdinand, who were the original super Catholics. And so we're calling Philip Super Catholic 3.0. And he sees himself as the defender of the faith throughout uh, Europe. Uh, and so he sees it as his right and all of Spain's right to defend Catholicism throughout Europe. In England, we have Mary as our queen. Remember, good old Bloody Mary. She is actually married to Philip. So again, Mary is Catholic. Um, she quickly dies um, and is replaced by Elizabeth the first, who is the daughter of Henry VIII uh, of England, um, who started the Church of England. Uh, Mary being Catholic, of course, wanted to turn England back to Catholicism. Elizabeth is Protestant um, and sees the smart political move, which we'll get into more later, to keep England Protestant. And then we have France. France is being ruled by Henry II. who is Catholic. Um, and that's where we are for now. Uh, he doesn't retain his power for very long. Um, and then that leaves us with the Holy Roman Empire. And they are just in a state of chaos. Um, and so that's where we are at the beginning of this time. And we will go through each of these countries in more detail in our subsequent videos. Enjoy!